everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff, and I've got several different LG phones right here. We've got the LG G5, we have the LG G4, and the V10. Oops. Just to show a bit of a size comparison, here we have them all sitting right here. So it's actually a pretty small phone. This isn't very large. It doesn't feel too heavy either. Actually, I've got very small hands, and this feels quite nice for me. So we have a 5.3 inch display. You can see what this looks like next to the 5.7 inch display of the V10. Then we have the 5.5 inch display of the G4. So it is a little bit smaller, but I think they make up for just the ergonomics and the size here. So now taking a little bit of a look around the phone, starting with the front. We have a 5.3 inch display. You can see that this has a nice slope to it. This is Gorilla Glass 4. We have an eight megapixel camera here. We have our proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, our receiver. Then right here, this is where it detaches for the battery. Then on the bottom, we have a speaker. We have a USB-C and a microphone. On the left-hand side is the volume rocker. On the right-hand side, we have the SIM card slot and also the SD card slot as well. Then on the back, we have a fingerprint sensor. This is one that you have to press. It turns on the phone, so it acts as the power button as well. Then we've got two cameras on the back. One is a 130-degree camera. The other one is a 70-degree camera. So you have really nice wide angles there. Then we have a single LED flash and also a sensor, an RGB sensor, to help with white balance. And also we have the infrared laser to help with autofocus assist. Then on the top, we have a standard headphone jack, we have a microphone, and also the infrared blaster. And if you're looking around the size of the phone here, it has a bit of a chamfered edge, but there are little notches that are plastic. And those little plastic notches are actually for the antenna so that this phone can get reception. Now, arguably, this either looks nice or it doesn't. For me, it almost makes the phone seem a little bit plasticky. Even though the entire phone is indeed made out of aluminum, I understand why they have to have those plastic bits there. I guess I would wish that that plastic bit would not be right next to the headphone jack. Then we have the notch for the battery. And so to take out the battery, we just need to press on this bit here. And it comes right out. And so this detaches as well. And you can't install this the wrong way because you have arrows there. You can just slide that back in, goes back into place. So it's got a really nice light feeling to it. And that's something that I really do like about this phone. It's light. It feels thin, it's, it's 100. And so as somebody who has really small hands, this is actually a really good fit for me. So if I could actually just slide it into my pocket, you can see there. Of course, in my girl jeans, this just doesn't fit very well no matter what I do. But that's nice, that's really not too bad. So very light, very thin, small. And then that way I really like what LG has done here. Now in terms of the colors that we have here, we've got the four different colors. We've got the silver, the pink, the gold, and also the titan. So kind of looks silverish, kind of blackish. My favorite one is definitely the silver. I think that it looks the nicest. Who's that always on display? I do think it's pretty cool though that they have figured out how to get just this to be always on by keeping just a third of the display on at all times. They say 0.8% per hour of battery is used, so this is a very low cost function, at least in terms of draining the battery. So it's not something I'd want to turn off. So let's take a look at the interface, at least the camera. Very, very simple. 
got some sharing options there. You can move between the 130 degree camera and the standard camera. I'm not sure what that is. Is it 80 degree camera? I'm gonna have to check that. We've got some cool demos as usual. That's what I really like going to the LG booths. So showing you the difference between the wide angle and the not wide angle. That's pretty cool. You can see though, you don't always have to touch here. You can zoom in, and then it switches to the other camera. So there is the wide angle one. Now that's the not wide angle camera. You can continue zooming from there. So that's pretty nice in terms of an interface feature. We have, of course, the simple auto and manual modes. You have your options for flash, turn to the front. You've got that eight megapixel camera on the front. Hello. Of course, you've got Ability to snap the picture. We've got some modes here. Let's just switch this around, make it less distracting. So we've got auto. What is this pop out thing? Pop out picture. Make your pictures pop with two rear cameras. You can capture the feel of the moment with a frame. And a variety of effects. You can also stack the effects. Interesting. It tries to highlight things. Looks like it's only applying to the background, though. Can you choose? No. Oh. Looks like you can choose a couple of different things. So I guess that that's nice, just to highlight whatever you're taking a picture of such as my fingers. And we've got the multi-view mode here. This is like on the V10, so you can choose some of the framing. Then you can swipe to go between different cameras. Looks pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We've got snap. You can assemble short video clips. Slow motion, panorama, time lapse. We've got our settings here. So you can choose 16.9. So you can choose your aspect. You can also choose whether you want to have 4K full HD or HD. You have different film effects, you have a timer, You've got your image stabilization. So something that's a bit of a bummer on the interface here, we don't have the amount of manual controls that we have, like on the V10 for video. And you've got some settings down here, for white balance, manual focus, exposure compensation, ISO, shutter speed, and then you have your auto exposure lock. You've got your little meter up here. It's very much like the G4. Now we've got this camera thing on the back loaded. And I'm a little bit sad to see that we don't have any more features added with this. So it's just the standard suite of features that's inside the camera app as it is. Except for now you've got the ability to zoom in. At, it's actually for zoom. And you've got your two-step camera button. So once to focus, down again to take the picture. This is the video recording button. Start, stop it. This button here. I think the big thing is going to be that you've got that larger battery there. Yeah, you know, I really can't get this wheel thing here to be programmed to anything else, and I don't see any menu for it either. So just say if I wanted to use it to control ISO, my assumption would be that it would recognize that I chose that as an option, and then it would map this to that, but it just keeps wanting to do zoom in and zoom out. So that's strange. Bit disappointing. I don't know. 
So the interface is really very simple, as I had mentioned before. There's no app drawer. Some people are either going to like that or they're not. LG has made this very, very flat, very simple. Here's the option for the always on display. If you don't like that, of course, you can turn it off, but it really isn't going to be using a lot of battery power. So we've got our smart settings, storage USB, battery and power saving. We've got our memory, smart cleaning apps, tap and pay, cloud users, location, fingerprints and security. So a very simplistic looking theme that we have here. Very, very simple. I think that I like it, although I'd probably just put the Google Now Launcher on this, honestly. There isn't too much by way of animations, but with what they do have, it looks pretty nice. I am digging it over what they had before, at the very least. We have all of our settings like we've always had before with LG. You can edit your notification panel. You can switch between users. I'm just looking at the white point of this display now, and I can see, just like with all my other LG phones, it's got a little bit of a blue, kind of a green, greenish hint, tint to the whites. So the white point is a little bit on the bluish, tiny bit of greenish side. Now I don't see a bunch of over sharpening on the display until you go underneath the camera application. Once you're underneath this camera application, everything is just over sharpened to hell. But it doesn't look like they're doing this over the entire interface. So this is a ridiculously sharp display being over 500 pixels per inch. And it's quite interesting to seeing a phone that was at 5.7 and 5.5 inches being at now 5.3. So y'all will have to tell me what you think about that. Now here we have the Hi-Fi. So this is the DAC. This is the Sabre 9620C DAC. You've got the DAC and an amp inside of this. So you see you've got some Bang & Olufsen headphones and once you plug this in it's going to do as the v10 does and you can see you can play hi-fi audio here using applications like tidal for instance so i was just informed that as long as the media supports hi-fi audio that it should be able to use dac which is nice because the v10 did have that locked down i don't know if that has been updated yet to not be locked down anymore. But that's at least what I'm told with this, is that the DAC does work for content that is capable. So these are the things that I'm noticing so far with this phone. I'd like to take some time a little bit later on, spend more time with it, get more acquainted, but I'm gonna have to head out to another event. So I'll see you guys later and goodbye.